Thanks. I'm nervous. Everyone is nervous. Have you seen other people uh, say that? Uh, I, uh, I think so. Yeah, everybody's nervous. No, um, what are yeah. you nervous about? Um, talking in general. Uh, our talking is hard uh, stuff. Man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's completely normal to be nervous. Would it help you to hear that I'm nervous too, or would that make things worse? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah, because like okay. I don't know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And like, what if I don't say the right thing? Oh, uh, it's okay. I don't always say the right thing either. But I what feel like you have a very good way of saying things. So. I know that's why I'm nervous, right? Because people come on and they have this expectation that I have a good way mm -hmm. of saying things. Mm -hmm. And so like the only thing I can do is disappoint. Nope, I don't think so. I think you're good no matter what. Yeah, so if <laughs> I were to tell you that, what would you say? I think you're great uh... just the way that you are. And you know what you bring to the table is what you bring to the table. That's cool. Yeah. Um, see, that's a problem that I kind of have. Yep. Yeah, I have. I think I have a, a, a bit of imposter syndrome here when it comes to that. Yeah. So tell us about that. Um, Is that what you want to talk about today? Or you want to talk about something else? I, I could talk about anything. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Um... Yeah, that's like something we could talk about because it's cool. something that like occurs a lot. Yeah. Sure. Um, so what do you mean by imposter syndrome? Or maybe it's not that, but um, basically whenever someone tries to like tell me that I'm like doing really well or that I'm uh, performing well or something or like doing well, like whether it's this or that, I always attribute it to not really being because of me. Um, I what think mostly, huh? Yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, uh, I think it's mainly just like uh, the people I'm surrounded by who like carry me a lot. You get carried? Yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. You're the noob and, and you're with a bunch of pro players. Yes. You guys are queuing yes. up together. Sorry, I uh, probably speak a lot in league terms or think a lot in league terms. But that's like... okay. We won't hold it against you. <laughs> yeah. So then, what what are you in league? Um, what am I? Yeah, like, what do you play in league? Oh, uh, I play the carry. Really? I play bot. Yeah. So you're the carry. Oh, but I'm. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> That's, That's mean, just a league. Could... In real life, what are you? Yeah. What's your um, What's your league position in real life? In real life, I feel like I'm kind of like a. I feel like a support. I feel like I try to like run around and be there for everyone as best sure. I can. Yeah. You know what I am in league? What? I'm a minion. <laughs> I just what? I just run what? down a particular lane mindlessly. <laughs> And get farmed by other people oh, for their benefit. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, it's okay. I'm pretty much the same. I'm pretty much like a, like a cannon minion, if anything. That's, yeah. Maybe it's worse. Right, why is yeah. it? I thought a cannon minion was better. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Okay, maybe I messed up. This. See? There you go. Messing it up again. No, one, no one's around to carry you now, Yvonne. Yeah, just exactly. You. Yeah. Just me. Uh oh. So it sounds like, but it, it does sound like you try to help other people a lot. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Can you I tell like us a little bit that. about that? Um, uh, or I guess it's just kind of what I do at OTV. I try to like be there for everyone if they need help or whatever the company needs help with. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's just like I try to like get everything done and make everyone happy. Hmm. Try to make everyone happy. Well, it also makes me happy seeing they're happy because I care about them a lot. Okay, so it sounds like you really do care. I hope so. Yeah. You hope so? 
Yeah, I, th I mean, I would, yeah, I, I think I care a lot. You think you care a lot. How would you know? I'm just... Um, I don't know. I think uh, there are a lot of circumstances where if it wasn't them or... Um, yeah, if it because it feel like in this what for what I do, I really have to like the people to like what I do. And what so do that's you do? why, um, uh, just like interact with them every day and like live with them and like, uh, yeah, just working with people like every day. I feel like you sort of have to like them or like yeah. you, your life wouldn't be very like great or you wouldn't like your job at all if you didn't. Yvonne, would you describe your life as great? Uh, not so much right now. It's okay. <laughs> what, what makes it, so it sounds like that question, maybe you seem a little bit more nervous or what are you feeling right now when I ask? I feel really nervous. Yeah. Um, so something changed. You were talking a little bit more uh, openly. So like, what did you feel when I asked you that question? Um, I think it's like overwhelming a lot. What's been happening on like social media or like um I also kind of got out of a relationship lately that's been like really turbulent for my emotions sure. um yeah so there's just like a whole spectrum of things that's been like I guess overwhelming in like this time period because it feels very um I guess it feels like a, there's a lot going on in such a short amount of time. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, that sounds incredibly overwhelming, like just too much to handle all at once. It's sort of like your, your ADC is inting and your top lane or DC. <laughs> yes. And or it's actually, yeah, pretty much. There's a yeah. lot of stressful things. Happening. It's just like every lane is falling apart and you're a support yes. and you're trying to, you're trying to like your mid laner, <laughs> like got off to a bad start. <laughs> and got ganked by their jungler and then your top laner dc'd and then your adc is inting chaos everywhere yeah and it's like you yeah. can't fix everything Yvonne. yeah is that how it feels um i'm trying to it's like i'm i'm like slowly like fixing things one by one sort of thing wow that's actually pretty impressive because most people just crumble under the pressure uh, I feel like a lot of things are like either a with time it's better or like two you learn to like manage it better after wow. experiencing a lot of things. So cool. Yeah. That's you sound like you're quite a resilient person. Maybe I never thought of myself that way. <laughs> How do you think you're, of yourself? Uh, it's a hard question. Sounds simple. Yeah, Very I don't difficult. know. <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's weird, right? So yeah. like, I just want to just call your attention to something. So it's kind of weird, mm -hmm. right? That we like think about ourselves in, we know in which ways we don't think about ourselves, but we don't know how we think about ourselves. Mm -hmm. You don't see yourself as resilient and you're pretty sure about that, but you're not quite sure how you see yourself, which is like a weird yeah. way to live life, but that's actually completely normal. Mm -hmm. We don't really know. We don't think about who we are. So maybe we could try to figure out how you do think about yourself. So okay. some of, so one thing to just acknowledge, right, is so it sounds like you think about yourself as less than what other people see. Yeah, I would say that for sure. Yeah. So we can just, let's put a pin in that for a second. What's it like to think about yourself as less than what other people see? Uh, I feel like I don't believe anything that people say. Mm -hmm. So, um, whenever they say like, for example, oh, your like channel is doing really well or anything, I feel like a lot of it is not because of me. It's because of like, um, all the really great people like around me. And I also feel like whenever they say like my if they say like my work ethic is really good i feel like that's just what you should be doing most of the time it's just like regular work um like if someone hired you for something or if like you're working at like any company like you'd just be doing what you're told 
or like okay. stuff like that, which I think is just like basic. Or um, um, can I just repeat back a little bit of what I heard? Sure. Sounds like you've got a pretty high evasion rate for appreciation. Yeah, I think so. It's kind of weird, huh? Yeah. Like when people try to tell you that you're doing a good job, you're like, dodged, easy. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And it's still and nice to hear, but like, um, I just remember my friend walking up to me at a party. And then he was like, wow, Yvonne, like your channels, your YouTube channel is doing really well. And I was just, I felt zero like credit for it. I felt like I didn't feel that much happiness hearing it. I, or if any. What did you feel? Um, the first thing I just said was, oh, yeah, but it's not me. Mm -hmm. And, and how long? Yeah, so how long have you felt that it isn't you? Um, for like a long time. I don't know exactly how long, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's been like that for a bit. Have you felt that way before you started streaming? Uh, no, but that's pretty different because before I started streaming, Streaming, I was just playing games and I wasn't there's like no one there's no like numbers to measure your success or like mm -hmm. any type of stuff like that it was just like I'm just playing video games after work and like that's it sure and and so what effect does numbers to measure your success have um mm, uh, I don't know but I feel like in our industry it's like a lot of people look at the numbers Sure. Um, I don't find myself having that much value towards the numbers, especially nowadays. I feel like they're very hollow to me and they're just like, I feel more, uh, I put more emphasis on if I'm happy or not. And I think like, if I'm just doing what I enjoy, I don't really care like how much numbers or whatever I put out. Are you happy? Um... In terms of like what I'm doing, yeah, I get to like play play games with my friends every day, and like that's what I enjoy. Sounds. I think sweet. I'm unhappy if I don't have friends to play with. Okay, yeah. so earlier I asked you if your life was great, and you said it's okay. And mm -hmm. so let me just pause for a moment and and think through what I'm hearing, and then you let me know if we're kind of on the same page. So there are a couple of circumstances, like, so you mentioned that what's going on right now, and I don't know exactly what you're referring to, but I'd love to hear more about that. Um, the second thing you said is that there's a lot of turbulent emotion around a breakup. So those are sort of like maybe temporary debuffs, mm -hmm. right? Or like, you know, they're like conditions, like weather patterns yeah. that may clear over time. Mm -hmm. But I'm also getting some sense that you know, there's something that isn't temporary. Somewhere along the way, you started to think that like, you know, the numbers and people's appreciation and your value, the value that people see doesn't like fit with what you see. Yeah. That doesn't feel quite as temporary to me. That feels like it's sort of baked in. What do you think? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I agree. So now, then what I see is a fork in the road. So what we can do is we can talk about what's baked in, right? Like, where do you get the, like, how can I say this? So you have a particular impression of yourself. And when someone tries to appreciate you, you dodge, right? Yeah. It's like a instant rejection almost. And I can't help it. Exactly. So then like, if we think about that, the reason that you're dodging is because it doesn't fit which means in turn that you have a particular perception of yourself, right? So then the question mm -hmm. becomes, where did you learn what you are? Like, how did you learn that? So we can talk about that. So we can talk about the over, like the, the, the idea of like how you view yourself and like where that comes mm -hmm. from.
Or what we can do is talk a little bit about sort of the effects of what's going on right now, as you put it, or the effects of the breakup. And because those two things could be related. Like sometimes when people break up with people, mm -hmm. like when there's a breakup going on, their sense of self-worth takes a hit and it okay. becomes harder for them to appreciate, uh, to accept the appreciation of others. Um, I think we could go with uh, what's going on right now and the breakup. Okay, cool. Let's do that first. Okay. And see if we have time for the other one. So t tell yeah. me, which one of those do you want to talk about first? The breakup or what's going on right now? Uh, I'm not sure which order is better or if there is one. Yeah. Okay. Um, Maybe we can just do it in the order that you mentioned them. Okay. What'd you mention first? Uh, things that's going on right now. Cool. How nervous are you, by the way? Um, a I'm pretty nervous. I'm like shaking a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to just think about that for a second? Should we help you with that? Uh, I think it's okay. I think it's just like, just nervous to talk about it a bit. But... Okay, sure. So yeah. let's, let's give it a shot. And if you're still feeling pretty nervous, we can pause and try to help you with your nervousness. Does that sound okay? okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, you know, if you're going to be nervous for an hour and a half, that's going to be rough, man. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, like, I think no matter what, I'll feel a little nervous, but it's just like, you know, talking about stuff, especially uh, having it out there. It's just like a little intimidating. Okay. Let me ask you one uh, last question to derail you because you're, you're just getting your feet steady under you. Yeah. Um, do you view yourself as a courageous person? Um, no, but I am trying to like do a lot of things this year to like push myself out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Is this one yeah. of them? Um, kind of. It's like not something I feel like I had to like really like muster myself up to do. It's something that like I've listened or taught, like watched a lot of your videos or streams and like, uh, I like really want to like have a talk with you. So it's like something that I wanted to do. It wasn't something okay. that I was like, had to like force myself to do. Okay. So now let me, I have another question. What did you want to talk to me about? Why did you want to come on here? Um, I kind of just, I, ha this is it. Uh, I never felt like I needed to talk to someone maybe until I was going through like a huge bait um in terms of my relationship and then also i guess that was the main thing that it stemmed from um because okay. i want okay. to like learn about myself more so that i could kind of have a better idea of like what i want or like um what i can do for myself this year like stuff like that cool man that's that's some i feel inspired listening to you is that weird <laughs> <laughs> inspired by what <laughs> i know it's it's confusing right so yeah. um sorry because i'm probably making you more nervous because here comes no, the appreciation no. so get ready like you're about to dodge yeah. ready ready okay. for it yeah. i mean so I, I think it's really cool that you noticed that your life was not what you wanted it to be and you thought intentionally about how you can make it different from what it is mm -hmm. like basically what i think is inspiring is that you chose not to live on autopilot right like for a moment like, cause like a minion is on autopilot. You're just going to run down. Like, we're just going to live life and just, just, you know, that's what we're going to do. We're not going to yeah. think we're not going to switch lanes. We're not mm -hmm. going to adapt. Relationship is relationship. Let's just go. And then mm -hmm. here's Yvonne. Who's kind of like, well, maybe I should think about like, I'm not sure if this relationship is right for me. Like maybe I should move lanes. Mm -hmm. And then like, what's the goal? Like, why am I playing this game of life? Like, what do I want out of life? Like, that's actually pretty cool. What do you think about that? Um, I think it comes from like what bothers me about other people. I think um something that bothers me is like when I hear someone complaining a lot and they don't do anything to uh, they, and they don't try to do anything about it. Like there are some things that are out of your control, but the things that are in your control, I feel like if you could do something to change what you're complaining about, then you should or at least like have the effort to. Sure. So, yeah, I just wanted to like 
get help with that, I guess. Like, cool. Do figure you, myself out a bit better. Do you view yourself as a complainer? Um, I can rant, but if I complain about something, I will try to solve it. At least I hope I'm like that. Like, okay. I try, I, I think I'm like that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, so that, that sounds like a positive quality. Like, it sounds like some, that's something that you respect and appreciate about yourself. Uh, I think so. I never thought of that specifically. I just know I don't like that about other people when they do it. So I try not to do it. But I may not be, I'm not perfect. So maybe I still complain and not fix things, you know? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't think anyone thinks you're perfect. But, um, yeah. you know, at, at the same time, I was just kind of thinking that sometimes what bothers us in other people is what we see in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes that's the case. Do you think that's the case here? Mm, not so much. I think it's because I do that, that it bothers me maybe when other, I see other people not doing that. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe we can come back to that in a second. Sorry that I, I'm kind of bouncing the conversation around. Like, Oh, I'm no, it's all good. Call. Yeah. Um, and so, okay, so you were saying, you know, you were debating about something about your relationship and that's why you wanted to come on. I'm just going to mm -hmm. try to toss out one more compliment that you can dodge. Um, would you, would you consider yourself, uh, I mean, so I, I think what you're doing is courageous. What do you think? What, um, what am I doing? Like, oh, you're coming on stream talking? and talking about it. Um, yeah, I, I would say not maybe. Mm, what's happening in your head? Let's, let's look. See oh, what's happening? Yeah. It's like, uh, <laughs> there's a party that's dodging and there's a party like, no. <laughs> yeah. Get it's hit. like it's like yes but it doesn't feel courageous to me because i don't uh i think it may be more so to other people sure. but i guess i'm not as afraid maybe i'm just like okay it's okay like, it's like so mm, it's it's not as hard mm, you don't really it, it's not that you discount your courageousness it's just like actually it's not that hard for you to come on yeah 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 exactly okay that. cool so that doesn't that doesn't feel to me that you're really dodging the compliment or appreciation so much as you just don't really think it's that applicable. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I can live with that. So maybe <laughs> we should talk about, um, can you tell us what debate you were having about your relationship? Um, so I, uh, just kind of a timeline, I guess. Um, I started dating my first boyfriend when I was like 16. And that relationship lasted like seven years. And then uh, it was like a month or so, like not too long afterwards, I got into my next relationship that lasted another almost seven years. And um, but he was just like really too good to like kind of pass up um, at the time. Like I just this met him and I was like, wow, this person's like amazing. Like he's so different from my ex. He was just like, um, and uh, I guess like the debate I got was this person is like, it felt like he did, he was like everything I would have wanted in someone. Um, he like said and did all like the right things. And what are the right uh, things? Mm, like he would, I mean, whenever I was stressed, he would always ask me like, oh, like, what can I do to help? Like he like helped sounds, me a lot. And sounds like he was supportive. Mm -hmm. he's like he's super super supportive in almost like anything that i do or yeah every, anything that i do and um uh he's like really funny and he um all my anyone that all of my friends like really like him there's he just like gets along with everyone and uh he's like a really good person and i guess um so for a really long time i never felt like i was really happy and Wait, for a it long wasn't... time you felt like you you were really happy um being with him is i'm very happy but okay. for myself it's like i felt like more within this year that um more reoccurring thoughts would happen where i wonder what i would be like if i was on my own because i was in a relationship since i was 16 pretty much and like, I've never gotten the chance to be like independent. I don't know what I am like on my own. I've always had someone else there. 
And I felt like such a strong need for independence, despite having being with someone who is like so great. Um, wow. So it was like something that it felt like a missing puzzle piece that I would like never experience or have if I would just stayed with this person forever. Um, I needed I it was like something that before I kind of brushed off and then it became more and more like in my face as uh, it like popped up in my thoughts and more. And then I felt like I just really needed to know like what it's like to truly be like on my own and how I grow as a person. And what, when you say it started to become in your face, what does that look like? Um, Like I just had more and more thoughts. I kept thinking about like, I want to like know what it's like. Like I, w- I don't know what it would be, what it's like at all for me to be on my own and like having to tackle problems on my own or like how I'd grow as a person. I think in like your early years, you have a lot of like finding yourself or like exploring or like experiencing things that um, help you grow a lot. And I feel like um, when you say early times, years, what, what ages are we talking about? Just to clarify, I feel like in your early twenties, okay, you have like a lot that of like i guess um things that just shape who you are as a person sure. and helps you grow so yeah yeah absolutely. Um, so you feel like you kind of missed out on that uh i guess being in a relationship i don't know if i ever like like i just don't know i would just never know what what's what am i like without someone that's just it. Yeah. So can I just point out like an interesting kind of connection that my mind is making? So earlier I had asked you like, you know, you'd said that you're, you don't view yourself resilient as resilient. And I asked, how do you view yourself? And you're like, I don't know. And I'm just wondering whether what you're talking about maybe is part of the reason that you don't know who you are because you've always sort of existed in relation to someone else. Mm-hmm. And you don't know you know, in a sense, it's kind of like, you know, you're duo queuing for everything. And so like the challenge <laughs> is like, if you're duo queuing, you never really know like what your skill is mm-hmm. because you've always yeah. got, you know, it's like, you're never solo queuing. So like, mm-hmm. and, and sure you're going to hit a particular rank, but like how much of that is like you being carried and like you doing the carrying. Mm-hmm. Is that how you feel? Um, not too much in terms of like, I never felt like I was getting carried by someone in terms of, in terms of like relationships. Mm. Um, my first boyfriend was just someone that I met while I was in high school and he was my first boyfriend. So we ended up dating for a really long time because it's like, you're an experience, you try to make it work. You like, it's like a very naive, like, I really wanted like my first boyfriend to like, uh, to be your last boyfriend. Yes, uh, type type of thought. But then it was kind of like, damn, it really wasn't working. There's no way. Like, it, it, you hit the point where you're like, do I want to be with this person for the rest of my life? And because it's either you break up or you're with them forever, right? So yep. the answer is no. You got to get out now. And I just just mustered it up, and it was like one of the hardest things I ever had to do because he was all I knew for like seven years and I was so attached to his family and we had mutual friends and everything. Yeah. So sounds like your lives have been kind of entangled together. Yeah. But like with my most recent boyfriend, it was like he gave me so much freedom and I um could do like whatever pretty much. Like uh he didn't really hold me back from doing anything, but it's just like the fact of the matter is that I've just been in a relationship for like the last how many years and I just never got to be on my own but that is a conflicting part because it's like he's so good but um I I just what it's is, like it felt like mistiming yeah so what is what is the appeal of independence like in your mind what what was it that you wanted from being not with um, someone what did you feel I like don't even mind? know if there's like s- something that I want in particular, it's more like the not knowing. 
um, what it's like, period. Hmm. Like I never got to experience it. It's like missing on like the experience and like how I could be as a person or what I'd be on my own. Interesting. Hmm. And so, so can you, are, are you still with your boyfriend or is that? Uh, no, I'm not right. No. So how, how did that, how did that happen? Uh, it's something we, I brought up to him like during Christmas and then it kind of like, you know, I kind of like brushed it off and I could tell like he didn't want to break up obviously. So he also like, um, tried to like, just be like, yeah, like, um, but then, yeah, what? Oh, like kind of like, um, (laughs) he was just like, uh, saying, I can't remember what he said, to be honest, but it was something that along the lines of like, I could tell he was trying to just be like, yeah, but we're like, you know, we're, we're good together. Sure. Right. So it's kind of like that. Um, and then, uh, and I agreed, uh, but it was just like a thought that just kept surfacing. And it was to the point where like, I know that if I stay with him, I will think whether it's a year down the line, 20 years down the line, 20, like 30 years down the line that like, I still would wonder what it would have been like to be on my own. And mm. so I didn't want to like be with him, but still have those thoughts. I needed to just know what it's like. And so it sounds like you wanted to avoid a life of regret. Yes. Or yeah, pretty much. And that you would have regretted staying with him. Um, I don't know if I would have regretted staying with him, but I would have just regretted like not knowing. And not knowing what involves it's... not being. With yeah. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's an important distinction that what you actually regret is not knowing what independence feels like. Mm-hmm. Hmm. This is tricky, Yvonne. <laughs> it's real tricky. Yeah. Um, what I'm hearing from you is like, it sounds like you understood that you had something that was valuable and good. Mm-hmm. And that's that what you- made it super hard. And that's why I wanted to talk to someone because it's like he's totally someone that I would see myself with in the end and be happy with but like it just felt like a missing like I just I just needed it sure uh, have it. and so what what happened next um and then uh we tried talking still for a bit to keep in touch and then it's just too hard because like my emotions are too turbulent whenever I get a message from him or um, anything like that. It, like, yeah. So, so after Christmas, you guys kind of broke up or. Oh no, this was, um, this was like in, um, we broke up right at the start of June. Okay. And, and so when, when you say you broke up, so what did, what, how did that go? Um, It feels bad. It feels like I'm kind of being, I'm being selfish. Um, Mm -hmm. Everyone around me feels sad for us. Feels super sad. Like, oh, a lot of people say they're getting like secondhand depression just from listening to, because it feels like we're like, uh, we love each other so much, but it's like almost like we have to be apart sort of thing. So it feels very tragic or like sad sounds tragic yeah um so i've been having a hard time um especially the past like couple of weeks to be like happy but like it's been obviously i know it's like a time thing i know as time goes on like it'll be better but uh it was just harder those couple of weeks and like um he messaged me once and then he um came over once to like just give me a cake and then like i I felt so sad. It was like the day that I finally felt better. And then he came over and then I was like, oh my God. It's like everyone was sad. Like the people in my house were sad. And like, yeah. How does it feel like to be someone who takes care of everyone and then make everyone sad? 
Um, it felt like I hated that I was like a negative energy. I felt like a, because I was sad, um, I was like exerting a bunch of like sad energy and they all told me it was okay, but it felt bad because normally I'm the one who's like, I've been, I feel like I've been so like stable kind of throughout all the years. Like I never felt sad or depressed. I've always been like content and like pretty like relatively like chill, you know, kind of just like Reliable. go with the flow. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and this was, I guess, the time where I felt like I was very, I was more negative or more like sad. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like exerting that energy, at least for too long. And two weeks felt long. Yeah. So let's ask. So let me ask you a couple questions about that. So the first is, is that okay? Um... I think so because I know it's only temporary. I wouldn't want to like be a negative ball of energy for like a long, long period of time. But like it feels good now that like knowing after like two to three weeks, like I feel like it's getting better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So next question I have for you is, do you think you were selfish? Um... I don't think so, but in this case, I feel like I am because um, I think it's because I know he doesn't want to break up, that I feel like it's a little selfish and that um, we could get back together in like a year from now or whatever, and it'd be like him waiting or whatever, even though I'm not asking him to, and that feels like selfish because I know he'll, I kind of feel like he would wait regardless until he knew like there was no chance. Mm. Um, yeah, so it feels like selfish in that regard. Is that okay? Uh, I think that's okay. Unless something bad happens in between or like, what do you yeah. mean by that? Um, I, th I don't think it would be okay if I started seeing someone else. What do you, All right, you just lost me for a second. So, so what would not be okay about that? Because he's waiting for you? Mm. What's Because it you... would hurt him a lot. Okay. So you don't think it's. Okay, so let me just share a couple of thoughts. So first of all, so you gotta you gotta like let me finish, okay? Because I'm gonna say okay. some things, but sometimes I say some things that sound hurtful, but I, it's really not my intention. So first thing is, okay. I think what you did was selfish, and I also think that that's completely okay. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes we forget, and and uh, did that did I just body you there? Was that hard no. to hear? Okay, no. So I, I think sometimes we forget, like so we have this idea of like who we are right? And Yvonne is the person that takes care of other people. She's the person who supports other people. You're the support, right? And then there, there mm -hmm. are takers and there are givers. And sometimes we go through life thinking that we're a giver. And so it can be really hard to like be a taker because that's not who you are. And so like, it's funny because we kind of say, you know, we treat selfishness like a bad thing because in a sense it is bad, but I don't think the world is quite that black and white. Like, I think any time you break up in a relationship where the other person doesn't want to break up because you're not happy, that's selfish. And also, mm -hmm. I think it's fine, right? Like, as human beings, you know, it's, it's okay. And I think this is a big problem that a lot of people have, that, like, it's okay to, you know, put yourself first. I don't think you should put yourself first all the time. I don't think that you yeah. should, you know... I think you should be careful about, I think the most important thing is that you're intentional and aware of when you're putting yourself first and when you're not putting yourself first. Mm -hmm. The biggest problems I've ever seen in relationships and when, are when people are not aware of like when they're being selfish and when they are. Like when someone doesn't, when, when someone thinks that they're being selfless and they're actually being selfish, like that's what tanks a relationship. Mm -hmm. For one person to say, hey, this doesn't work for me right now and I need to like put myself first, I think that's fine.
And is it going to hurt another person? Yes. And that's actually okay too. I don't think that we can live our lives controlling. I mean, there's certainly some things that we can do that can hurt other people, but I think some of that is on them and some of that is on us. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, you can't hurt another person because you clearly can. And, and maybe mm -hmm. that's when you refer to what's going on right now. I think that's what we see. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not saying that, you know, you, you can't hurt, like, of course you can hurt another human being. But I think, that, you know, some of that is like their investment and their attachment to the relationship is what's going to cause them hurt. Um, and, and sometimes I think it is okay to end a relationship that your partner doesn't want to end because it's not working for you because that's just sort of, that's life, right? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about all that? That makes sense. That sounds a lot better than what was in my head. <laughs> what was in your head? Oh, I just felt bad. And I felt like... Um, I just felt bad. Because... Um, he asked me if like what I'm doing feels fair and it, I guess it does feel like it's fair to me, but not him. Sure. So. And I agree. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that sometimes it's okay to be unfair in a relationship. Like that's, this is the crazy thing is like, you know, we try to be perfect, but I think that like life is muddy, right? I mean, mm -hmm. when you're playing League of Legends, like, sometimes you get damaged. It's part of the game. You know, it's, it's like, and, and is it unfair to him? Absolutely. And sometimes I think that that's okay, which is weird, because, like, a lot of times we tie together, like, we assume that unfairness is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Which is, like, a really, really interesting nuance. And that we feel like everyone has to be fair all the time. But in my experience of relationships, like relationships are frequently unfair and even the healthiest ones are frequently very unfair. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, we hope that over time that there's fairness over the aggregate, but like he's invested a lot in the relationship. It sounds like he's been very supportive. It sounds like he's been a good person. He's been nice to your friends. He's, he's really supported you. And so it kind of mm -hmm. feels like he kind of got screwed. Mm -hmm. You know, cause, cause you're, and I'm not trying to beat you up here, but I think, I think it's important to call it what it is because like from his perspective, he's invested seven years into this relationship. And like the hardest thing from his perspective is he's not doing anything wrong. Yeah. Like it's so easy to, or not so easy, but it comes way easier to break up with someone and be broken up with if you fucked up in some way. Yeah. Yeah. I but agree. like, what the fuck? He did everything right. <laughs> Yeah. And, and I'm going to be a little Good. bit hyperbolic here. So, you know, let me know if your feelings get hurt, but I'm just going to, mm -hmm. you're kind of being neutral and kind of quiet. And so when you're, when people are neutral, I tend to show more emotion. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me know if you feel judged, but okay. he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. You know, like you're breaking up with me when I've supported you for seven years and like you're mm -hmm. dumping me because you need independence. Mm -mm. Like, why didn't you tell me when you were 24 so I could have moved on with my life, you know? Like, that's mm -hmm. how he feels, and that's a fair way to feel. Mm -hmm. And just because he feels like it's unfair doesn't mean that you can't break up with him. Mm-hmm. Yep, I agree. Just one of those things that feels bad, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Do people... Yeah, so you seem, like, okay with this. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's impressive. What? Oh, but I, oh, is is it? Yeah, I, I think it's really hard to. So I, I think a lot of people feel. Um, a lot of people have trouble tolerating the idea that they did something that was unfair to another person, and they actually mm -hmm. do all kinds of mental gymnastics to convince themselves that it was fair. That's what I think is really impressive because uh -huh. I've talked to a lot of people who, who are in your situation and find some way to make it fair, mm -hmm. right? They come up with all these reasons of things that like maybe your boyfriend did or didn't do or like, you know, they like mm -hmm. rationalize things or they justify things. But I, I think I genuinely, I, I, I really respect what you're saying, which is that, yeah, it kind of sucks for him, but I had to do it because I had to do it. Mm-hmm.
which sort of sounds cold, but I think that it's actually incredibly authentic. And it's better to be honest with yourself and know that you did something that like hurt another human being than pretend that you did it. That's it felt more like also I'd be dishonest with him if I stayed with him and felt that way. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, the other way to look at it is at you told him it like, so on the one hand, you maybe could have told him a little bit earlier, but, you know, I think mm -hmm. you told him when you did because that's when you started to feel this way. Mm -hmm. It was more hand, like a lot strongly about it. Yeah. On the yeah. other hand, you know, I think it is good that, you know, you didn't just squash those feelings and then go another seven years. Yeah. Because I've, yeah. I've seen those relationships too, where, you know, then it usually ends in divorce. Mm -hmm. And, and um, yeah, so, okay. So I feel like we kind of covered that. I have a couple of other different thoughts. Any, any thoughts, questions, reflections? Uh, no, that was good. Okay. Is that helpful? Yeah, it was really helpful. How? Can I go for a bathroom bake? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank Never. You. Posture check. Wait, how am I saying hi to myself? Dr. K, she got up. Maybe. Seems uncomfortable for the headrest, but maybe it isn't. So what should we do, chat? Should we go philosophical? Should we talk about current events? Or should we talk about the imposter syndrome? Okay. Sorry. I'm uh, back. Welcome back. Thanks. So I have a, a couple of questions for you, Yvonne. Okay. So um, I sort of feel like we're done talking about that thing. You seem mm -hmm. to be actually pretty level-headed about it. And I'm not getting like a whole lot of like unresolved piles of, yeah. you know, emotion. Um, mm -hmm. So a couple of other thoughts. I mean, does that feel okay to you? I mean, you're nodding, but mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, how's your nervousness, by the way? Uh, better now. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. Um, so a couple of interesting, so a couple of directions. So we can talk about what's going on now. We can talk about imposter syndrome and where you kind of get the idea that, you know, why you dodge when people try to appreciate you. Because you didn't dodge at all right now, by the way. I don't know if you mm. kind of noticed that, but like you weren't like dodging or no cognitive biases or anything like that. At least not that I could pick up. Um, so either you're outplaying me or they're not there. I think it's just in certain areas, like maybe not in all aspects of life, but in that aspect, I do feel that way. Yeah, So I would agree with that. So we can talk about kind of what's going on right now, how that's stressful, where you get your idea of like who you are. Um, we can also dig into a little bit more about that sort of like thirst for independence and where that comes from. I think those, mm -hmm. like those are kind of deeper discussions. The other interesting thing, this is a little bit philosophical, a little bit yogic, but you know, it was, and so this may be a little bit less personal. I don't know how helpful this is going to be, but I find it interesting is the idea of living a life without regrets, right? So like when you're faced with a choice in life and you say, this is good, but if I do this, then I may regret something. Like, how do you know when to change? And how do you know when to conquer? So you're essentially giving in to your fear of regret by making mm -hmm. a change in your relationship. You see that? Mm -hmm. So when do you conquer the fear of regret and when do you give in to the fear of regret? And I don't think that one is necessarily better than the other because sometimes giving in to the fear of regret is exactly what you need to, like that's how you make good choices. And mm -hmm. other times it's how you make terrible choices. Yeah. Right? So like if I'm in like my mid 40s and I have a midlife crisis and I think about all of the things 
I feel tied down with a mortgage and paying college funds and stuff like that. And I think about, you know, I wanted to get a, you know, like a motorcycle and like drive across mm -hmm. Asia. And mm -hmm. then I like that regret. And I'm like, fuck that. I'm going to divorce. I'm going to go because I have to like do this for myself. Otherwise I'll mm -hmm. die on my deathbed and I'll have regrets. Mm -hmm. So when is it the right choice to give into the fear of regret? And when it is, when is it the wrong choice? I don't even know how to begin that discussion, but I think it's a really interesting conundrum, right? Mm -hmm. Like, is it, it, cause there is a road in which you can essentially let go of your fear of what could have been mm -hmm. and stick with what you have. Yeah. Um, and it's just a interesting kind of conundrum that I was noticing that, you know, you were facing it and we sort of have this idea that like, you got to do you, but I, I don't know if that's always true because sometimes that just turns you into an asshole. Yeah. I think it really depends on what it is. Cause I think like in my case, it's like, uh, it would be also unfair to him. And it's like something that I didn't just like randomly thought of and on a whim. It's like something that's been reoccurring and I felt like it was fairly important and somewhat reasonable to do. So yeah. I think I'm, if it was like very extreme, you'd have to definitely be way more careful about that. Yeah. So I yeah. agree with you 100%. And also having talked to some 45 year olds, they also think about it a lot. Sometimes they think about mm -hmm. it for years. Mm -hmm. And they feel like it is unfair to their partner as well to be in a marriage where you're not happy. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes they, they think the same things, even though I'm painting a picture that's like far more reason, I mean, far less reasonable. Sometimes mm -hmm. those people feel the same way. And I think it's an interesting question to figure out like, you know, how do you know what's when what's right and what's wrong but anyway yeah um so what what what, what do you want to talk about because I, I think we still have a little bit of time mm. you want to talk about what's going on right now you want to talk about a little bit more about imposter syndrome um. where independence where the need for independence comes from why why you get pissed off when people complain and do nothing about it uh i think we could talk about what's going on right now yeah, so tell me what's going on right now. Um, so right now there's a lot of the sexual harassment and sexual assault stuff going around uh, on social media. And I guess uh, there's like some things that I minimized a lot before that are starting to what feels like blow up in my face now. And um, when I was in those situations, I guess, both times I just like froze at certain points. And like, I don't know why I do that or like how to prevent that or like. What do you mean by those situations where you froze? What does that mean? Um, in which like the sexual harassment or assault or yeah happened to you mm -hmm. oh shit that's awful have you talked about this like have you because i know a lot of people are like posting stuff publicly have you mentioned any of this to people before uh no i haven't um okay. but i've talked to my friends about it okay so the first question, and I mean this question genuinely, I understand that we sort of said we're going to talk about this, but I, I would really think about whether you're, to what degree you're comfortable disclosing stuff like here and now, because I definitely don't want to ask you things that you're not comfortable saying. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just think about that for a second. Cause I'm, you know, I, my next question is going to be like, what happened? Yeah. And, but I, I want to just make sure. I don't want you to feel, I want to acknowledge that you may feel pressure to answer that question. And at the same time, I want to give you the space to not answer it and also I not think... judge you for like not speaking because you're not ready. Uh, I think I'm okay with like explaining scenarios and like circumstances and how I feel and stuff, but I don't want to like name people. Okay. That's the only thing. 
Okay. I completely yeah. understand and respect that. Yeah. And, but <laughs> I, I, I want to just, I think it's important if it's okay with you for us to also talk about what makes you uncomfortable naming people. Mm. Not that you have to name the people, but can we explore the feeling of hesitation about naming people? Yeah. Okay. Some so, of it. Yeah. Great. I, I'm just asking for whatever you feel comfortable yeah. with there. Okay. Because, and, and now I want you to step out of this discussion and talk to me. We're not talking about this. Now we're just step out of it. We're going to go meta mm -hmm. for a second. Okay. So Yvonne, I, I want us to think a little bit about our opportunities in this conversation. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have personal feelings. Fine. It can be hard for you. Fine. There can be all kinds of consequences of this conversation. The reason that I'm particularly interested and would like permission to explore your feelings, to not name names and explore the boundary. Cause you drew a line in the sand, right? You said, yeah. I'm okay talking about all this shit, but I'm not okay talking about this. Mm -hmm. And I think that line in the sand is something that many, many people experience and is part of what's responsible for what we're the situation. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So I think e I'm not asking you to name names. I'm really not. Yeah. At the same time, mm -hmm. I think it's very, very important for everyone to understand when someone is a victim of some kind or the receiver of sexual harassment or assault, like what is going on that keeps that like you don't want to say something right? In fact, you actively mm -hmm. don't want to. And like, what's mm -hmm. up with that? Because that's something that I think we need to understand. I'm not saying you should change. Some yeah, people may yeah. say that you should change, but I'm not, it's mm -hmm. not my place. Yeah. Um, so, okay, cool. Can we talk? We good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So what happened? Um, uh, the first time was at, a at a club for a friend's birthday. Mm -hmm. And then he got a table, and then um, how old were you? By I, this was in 2018. Okay, I was okay. So a couple years ago. Yeah. Okay. A couple years ago, and then uh, it was next to a table of some people that I knew uh, from esports. And uh, they weren't people that I met before, but I just knew of them because I, because I see them on LCS and stuff. And then uh, one of the guys was like talking to me because he recognized me from one of our parties. And then he was just like, "Oh, like you're, like Yvonne from Offline TV and like stuff like that." And then he like struck up a conversation. And then he also. Like he asked me like what ethnicity I was and I said, Oh, I'm like Chinese. And then uh he like talked to the other people that were there too. And he uh asked them like the same thing, kind of here and there, uh similar conversation. And then like, yeah, I thought he was like being pretty friendly, but just like talking wise, like there wasn't anything crazy. And he was like pretty drunk. And then we walked out of the club and then he like said to someone beside him who was like there, uh, he was just like, how do I say I want to fuck you in Chinese? And, and then later, um, we, I tried to get into an Uber to go to my friend's house. We're all in like a van because a bunch of us are going together. And then um, he's, so my boyfriend at the time is, we're, it's us in the backseat, my boyfriend, that guy, and me. And then- The guy um, sitting in the middle? Yeah. I don't know why he was sitting in the middle. It's just when we got into like, sure. the, I don't even know why he came with us, to be honest. He just saw maybe where I was going. And so he followed, I'm not sure. But um, he was just in the, in between us. I don't think he he didn't know we were dating. I think because it was just like, um, yeah. And then uh, in the van, like I was wearing like a 
crop top and like a skirt and What's he like top? it's like a top it's like a, a t-shirt is usually pretty long a crop top is kind of like cropped in the middle okay so when you're sitting down it could like go up a little bit sure. like you could yeah um it's like a bit it's just a short t-shirt and then so, so you know, like is your is your belly button showing in the crop top no no okay. not even it goes past that okay um and then uh he has some I, I don't remember how but i just remember like he had his hand like under my crop top like on my skin and i felt super uncomfortable like his arm around me like touching me there and then i I remember I was like, I have to like stop this. And then I like grabbed his hand. I grabbed his hand and I put it over my head back to where he was or back to just, you know, on his side. This is my side. And like I put it back on his side. And then, um, and then somehow he had his hand on my ass. And then I just froze. Like he basically went back and had his hand on my ass and I just froze and I didn't do anything. Or or from his side. All the way around. Like like around like this. Yep. And then I just like froze and I just couldn't do anything the rest of the way because I felt like I already like threw his hand away and he did it again and I didn't know what to do. And then um Yeah, and yeah, that's and then he, we got back to my friend's place and then i think he saw there's like a ton of people there and he just left afterwards and then later on that we like a, a couple of days later he like dm'd me on twitter and he's like hey i don't remember like anything from that night I just remember meeting you and that was it and i didn't reply Can I digest for a moment? Yeah. Man, so fucking creepy. Oh my God. That was the first one. I feel like that just had to, I had to get that out, out there. Yeah. So creepy. I can't, I'm just. And so you said that he talked. Okay. I'm just, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't know if I should ask you questions or just hear the second one. And then I, I don't know. What do you think? Okay. Um, I honestly, I'm not sure, but like you, you can do whichever you feel like could work best. I, Yvonne, I need your help because I have no, like, how the fuck am I supposed to know what's supposed to work best? <laughs> oh, dang. I don't know either. Okay. All uh, right. Um, Let me give you two options. You tell me which one okay. you think will work. So one okay, thing that okay. we can do is we can just hear the second story and then, like, try to find themes or common things. Or we can, like, tunnel down into this one first. Okay. Um, what do you think? Okay, maybe second one and then find like the okay. common theme i Let's think i just want to like yeah um second one is uh someone who is like a really good friend of mine mm -hmm. who i like trusted a lot and oh my god every story is the i'm drunk story but he was drunk he came he he just uh he was out drinking and uh i was like in my room in my bed and then he came in and he do you guys live uh, together uh no okay yeah um how does he get into your house uh he was just, he just can, or, okay. just, yeah, just a good friend. And um, he came in and uh, laid down next to me, 
and uh, felt it was fine. That wasn't anything weird. And then he grabbed my hand and like held it and I froze but I was like maybe he's just like drunk and like wants to just chill or something um and then he like started brushing my hand against his face and then he like kissed it and then uh... And then he also, like, went into, like, my sleeve, like, my t-shirt sleeve, and then, like, basically just an air, just a, it was weird, like, it was, like, an area I was uncomfortable with, and then I just, like, froze, and, like, I didn't know what to do, and then 10 minutes later, and then he, like, stopped, and then he, like, it looked like he like went he like fell asleep or something and then 10 minutes later he's like whoa how'd i get here and i was like you don't remember anything and he's like no and i i was like okay um and i thought like he just you know was that just he was just drunk and maybe he blacked out and he forgot i don't know and then um i asked him the next day i was like do you like, so do you remember what happened last night? And he's just like, no. And I was like, okay. Um, but I just kind of brushed it off, I guess. And then a month later, or like, I don't even know if it was a month later or a couple weeks later, but like something, he came in again, again when he was drunk. And then... uh apologized for what he did he said he knew he was like overstepping or something and that it was like yeah uh so he remembered when he was drunk again but he didn't remember when i asked him he was sober the next day that time so what do you think about that I feel like he remembers and he just lied that he forgot what happened last night or the other night. Why would someone do that? Why would someone lie about remembering? So he doesn't have to be as responsible for what he did. Can you think of any other reasons? Want us to dodge responsibility. Absolutely. One of the biggest reasons that people lie. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure what the other could be right now. But he apologized, and then 10 minutes later, he did the exact same thing almost. So just minus the t-shirt part. I got to say, the t-shirt's fucking weird, man. It is weird. Yes. Yes, it's weird. I don't even... I mean, I've heard a lot of weird shit in my day. (laughs) <laughs> and it's just, yeah. it's so interesting how when we think about violation we think about certain body parts but mm-hmm. holy shit the t-shirt sounds so creepy it is it's like an uncomfortable place like it's such a I weird place to like touch people it's like when you think about like boundaries and violations like we generally think about like genitals yeah or even the face but like the t-shirt is just I mean, it, it, it sounds, I mean, it, so, sorry if I'm talking too much about this or this is making you uncomfortable. It's just hearing your story has made me really appreciate how violation doesn't have to do with genitals, right? There's something about the experience of like boundaries and space and lines and crossing lines that is not just, you know, it, like there, there's a certain essence to it. It's like a place that no one normally touches. It was like right on the side here. That's like next to, you know, and it's like, it feels very like private still, or like, it's just not somewhat somewhere. I want my good friend to be touching me. That's weird. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Uh, And and like, he, he just pretended like he forgot about the whole thing. How does that make you feel? 
I minimized it a lot because I would still see him around. So I basically tried to just act like it never happened. So see, that's interesting. The language there is interesting. I tried to act like it never happened. So what I'm hearing from you is there's actually like a part of your mind that is actively suppressing what happened. Yeah. And I did that for a very long time. How do you understand that part of you? Um, I didn't, I think, until recently when I started reading everything. And I realized how much I minimized it. And it's to the point where it's very hard for me to ignore now. Right. So what I'm asking you is why does a mind... So now we're going to go meta again, okay? Like, so like, let me just... So actually, first, let me ask you. So after sharing this stuff or, or saying it out loud, do you have any thoughts or feelings that come up? Like, how do you feel mm -hmm. after sharing this? I feel like upset that he was able to get away with it. Um, that people who just, people don't see him that way. And like, it just sucks. People don't see him that way. And so what, how does that shape what you do? Mm. I don't really know. It just, yeah. So let's look at that. So when people don't see someone a particular way, what I'm hearing from you is that it makes it harder for you to run against the grain, right? If everyone's thinking one way, it's hard to speak up. Mm, I feel differently from that, and I can't really explain it. Um, yeah, it's just not something... Can... Yeah. So, Yvonne, I... I, I really am going to press you here if that's okay, because I think it's very important for everyone out there listening to understand why it's hard for you to speak. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So like I'm hearing a theme here, which is that like you kind of made, like there were lots of points where you could have said something and you didn't, and I'm not blaming you for that. I'm just yeah. saying that I think it's a testament to like the pressure that you feel in those moments. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's like really, really hard to speak. And the question yeah. is why? Right. So like when, when a dude, so first of all, so it sounds like he asked someone else, how do you say I want to fuck or something in Chinese? Right. Or no, he said, I want to fuck you. How do you say I want to fuck you in Chinese? And he wasn't talking to you. He was talking no, to someone he's... else. Yeah, Man but he or just woman. yelled it so I could hear it. Okay, so like you're pretty sure it was directed towards you, which, you know, when he climbs into the car and starts putting his hand on your ass, we can yes. sort of put two and two together. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I'm just, I'm kind of envisioning, because you use this, this phrase, you say, you use the word froze. Mm -hmm. And I'd really like to understand you know, as best as you can. And I understand it's hard because like, we don't talk about this stuff. And like, this is the problem, right? Is people don't know. So if we think about like what we do on the stream, we help people put words to things that they don't understand. And by yeah. one person putting words to it, it helps everyone else recognize, oh shit, that's what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And I haven't yeah. been able to put words to it. And, and if it's okay with you and it's not you know, like you, you draw the line wherever you want to, or, you know, you call it quits whenever you're ready to. And I, I really, I'm not trying to, I won't judge you for that. At the same yeah. time, I do feel like it's very important for people to at least understand how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. And I find myself, because if I think, I think if we want to fix this, we have to help people understand like how you freeze. Because it's, it, it's shocking to me that something like this can happen. And by shocking, I, once again, I don't blame you for it. 
But I, I think it's just, it speaks to how big of a problem this is that you can be in a car with your boyfriend and a dude can be like feeling you up. There's a lot of stuff here that just boggles my mind. Like, you know, when, when your friend comes in and lays down next to you in bed, like, is that something that happened? Like, is that normal within the range of how you interact with people? And I'm not trying to paint you in a bad no. light. Just and, and so, so, you know, like, how does, how does a situation arise where like, he thinks that that's acceptable? And furthermore, when he's laying in bed, like what makes it hard for you? I, I, I don't want to say what makes it hard for you to tell him to leave, but because I, I heard your language, it was sort of like, well, maybe it's just this. Like, there's a part of your mind that is telling you that this is not okay. And what I'm also hearing you is there's a part of your mind that is trying to, like, be the mafia and, like, shut up the part of your mind that's telling you it's not okay. That's almost how it sounds to me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, you tried really hard to minimize it. It's almost like the secret police is, like, showing up at your door and telling the part of your mind that's like, hey, this is fucked up. They're like, shh, don't say anything. And even now, that, I, I mean, I'm guessing that that's still there because you even said, I don't want to name names. So I want you to, like, yeah. look within yourself and, and try to think, is there a part of you that's saying, and I'm sorry that this is hurting you. I, I really, I, I really am. No, it's but like, I, you know, I think it, it scares the shit out of me that there's like some part of you that like keeps you from speaking. And I'm not saying you're dumb and I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying like, that's the reality that we face. What we're seeing is like the actual struggle. Like this is why people stay silent because something within you is telling you, Yvonne, whatever you do, do not open your mouth. Like, do you see that? Yeah. What is that? How would you feel about yourself if you did open your mouth? And let me know if we got to stop. Oh, okay. It's okay. Um... I just can't. I guess it's not just me. There's like, it just affects a lot of things. So I can't say anything. I'm going to think about that you can keep going if you want to i'm just letting you know that i think there's a lot there and i'm gonna do my best to pull as much out of that statement as i can because i recognize that this is painful for you in some way so i'm gonna try to make every word count if that makes sense mm -hmm. what are the consequences that you're afraid of Everything that happens after. What, so. what does your mind envision will happen after? Things will just be very scary. What will be like scary? Uh... I think it it just there's a lot that comes with it, so I like it's like hard for me to say anything, okay i it's weird, so i I found myself smiling there for a second because you remember earlier when I was like thinking you're a courageous person, mhm. Mm I, I think, I think twice as much now. 
or 10 times as much. Um, I thought you were going to say opposite. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Because how do you feel? Uh, the same. I, do, I just feel like... I guess you just emphasized it a lot more. That like... I really can't say anything. And that feeling just really sucks. What sucks about that feeling? Um, the under different circumstances or a lot of other things that I have to consider, um, I would say something. So I'm wondering if we should just stop this conversation because I don't want this to damage you in any way, shape or form. What do you think? Um, I don't think it's damaging. I think I'm just like, I just don't want people to know. Okay. So if people knew, how would you, what would happen that you're afraid of? What would you, what, what would you, they think about you? I don't think it'd be any thing to I don't I just think chaos the world burned down and like that's just it that's just how I see it chaos yeah. yeah well I mean on the one hand it sort of makes sense because I can imagine why you would want to stay silent if the alternative is is burning the world down <laughs> yeah right I, I i think for me yvonne it's incredibly confusing so i tend to be like a pretty good judge of i can like read people's minds kind of and even then i mean i can you know i can take a stab at it but to me it's a little bit confusing about you know what what is it that you're afraid of like and the other the other interesting thing is that i wonder if it's actually fear that's keeping your mouth shut. i am beginning to realize it's not fear I think what you're trying to do is preserve and protect. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. There's Yvonne. Support player. Protecting. Taking it for the team. And boy, did you take it this time. <laughs> Who are you protecting? I'm not asking you to name those people, I mean, in general, like, you know, just to be clear. What does it feel like you're protecting? Uh, a lot of things. How are you feeling right now? This may sound kind of weird, but I have faith in you. I don't know exactly for what, but I'm in your corner. And, um, yeah, I hope you didn't dodge that one. Did you dodge <laughs> that? Okay, good. No. <laughs> You've got so many debuffs right now, you can't dodge anything. <laughs> it's true. I'll just take anything at this point. <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean, I think you're a good person. And oddly enough, Yvonne, so I'm going to talk a little bit because I think it may help you feel like like less in your head, which maybe is bad, maybe is good, but I'm going to do it because I feel like I got to I got to taunt. Okay, so I'm going to tank and I'm going to you, know, you want to keep going? Should I stay silent? No, 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 you can go. Okay. You want to explore your feelings right now or you want me to take the camera off of you? 
Um, no, you can go. Okay. So oddly enough, I, I think this is making a lot more sense to me because I think that... How can I say this? So I tend to be an optimist. And when I think about, you know, what people make sacrifices for, I tend to think that they make sacrifices and ultimately like the biggest sacrifice that you're making is yourself here, right? Can we sort of see that? You're like, you're paying the price for something. We don't really know exactly what it is. You're protecting a lot of things. You're protecting the world from coming down with your silence. And like, this is your cross to bear. There's this idea that like we can protect the world with our suffering. And that's what I see you doing. And the interesting thing, the interesting assumption here is that people think that women stay silent, or not just women, but men too, just victims, stay silent out of negative emotions. And to me, that's never really like fit perfectly because like fear is a powerful motivator, but for the amount of suffering that people put themselves through and feel and carry and don't let go, because people hold on to it, right? It actually makes far more sense to me that there's actually like a noble reason in your mind that allows you to put yourself through this. Yeah. Like protection and being a support and taking care of others and maintaining stability are like the reasons that we put up with shit. Like that actually makes way more sense to me. And that's not something that I had really ever understood or appreciated until we had this conversation. Everyone just assumes that it's like fear, right? But mm -hmm. I think it's all kinds of like other stuff. And I'm not getting this from you quite yet, but I really wonder if it's down there. Like sometimes, you know, the reason that some women stay silent in the car is because when he touches you, in a weird way, your mind thinks that if your boyfriend knew, he would break up with you. What do you think about that? Mm, that wasn't the case for me. Yeah, I'm not getting that from you. I think it's actually quite, I'm happy that you're not doing that because sometimes women blame themselves mm -hmm. for being victims. I kind of did a little bit in the sense of like, because my boyfriend did ask me like, why didn't I say anything at the time? Because he was right there or he asked or like I didn't tell him until the guy left our friend's place and I said like I don't know I just like froze and I couldn't say anything at the time and that's just how I explained it and I guess like I don't I didn't blame myself because I didn't want to be in that situation in the first place and he put me there so it's like how I react isn't why am I to blame for how I reacted when I did try to like move him away and like I didn't even want to be put in that situation in the first place and I you don't, don't blame, blame yourself mm -mm. that's rare it's also hard to not blame yourself because a lot of times people do blame themselves do you blame yourself for not saying no more forcefully? I feel like I tried, but it's like I was put in a situation that I didn't expect at all, so I didn't know what to do. And it's like thinking on your feet, but your brain's not really working because you're like trying to process what's going on. So, uh, yeah, I just think that it's not my fault that he just literally couldn't keep his hands to himself. Yeah. I think there's something really important there too. So a lot of people, when they look at a story like this, they say that you could have said no at any point. Mm -hmm. Right. You could have told your friend, what the fuck are you doing in my bed? Mm -hmm. you, know? you could have said, Hey, like, don't touch me. I have a boyfriend and he's sitting right over there. Go fuck yourself. Mm hmm. You know, th there are a lot of people who will say that, and it, they're not wrong, right? You could have said no. Mm -hmm. um, 
And at the same time, I don't think that people really understand or appreciate. Even women will say this about other women, by the way. I don't think they understand or appreciate the physiological response that happens when something like this happens and how like your mental goes boom. Like you're just not thinking clearly. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it, there's some, there are forces within you that keep you from speaking. And we don't really understand that or appreciate that. And the weird thing is, it's kind of interesting because you say that you weren't prepared for the situation. I think therein actually lies half the problem. Mm -hmm. And what I'm really like grateful, honestly, Yvonne, from the bottom of my heart as a, as a father of like two daughters, I am like really grateful for you that you're like saying this because this is how people get prepared. Right. It's like someone like you have to know that it can happen before it actually happens. Yeah. And a lot of times, like, like the problem is that no one knows that the shit can happen. It's like everyone just assumes because mm -hmm. as you put it, he's a friendly guy. Yeah. And the other guy has been a friend of yours for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so we're not prepared. And like, it's hard to say no in the moment. And I think the next thing, so this is like, how do you feel right now, by the way? I feel better. Okay. Yeah. So I've tanked. So now, now we have an interesting question, right? So like, we got to figure out, can we keep going or is this enough for today? And if you can keep going, I'm going to drop aggro and okay. put it back on you, but only if you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. So now I, I think we've got to talk about like, why I'm not, once again, I'm not trying to pressure you into speaking or anything like that. So please understand that. But I do think it's important, very important for people to understand why you can talk about the general, general, and you yourself, why you can talk about the generalities of the situation without naming names. Mm -hmm. Right. So you like, what is it that keeps you from speaking? Fine. Like your, your, you know, your mind isn't, wasn't functioning back then. There's like a physiological stress response. There's actually, um, you know, there's a, it, and just so people know, have you ever heard of something called catatonia? No. Okay. Okay. So I'll just tell, I'll, I'll show you guys a paper later. So there's a, there's a mammalian survival response, which is to freeze and play dead. Mm -hmm. So it's like some people call it playing possum. So you like, you know, when some animals are attacked, they just like literally freeze. There's a psychiatric condition called catatonia, which is fascinating to see. But it's like when people become like literally stuck and, mm -hmm. and like they can't speak, they can't move. They're like sitting there just with their eyes open and they're like minimally responsive to stimuli. Mm -hmm. And so people have hypothesized that. So catatonia is like actually something that happens to people sometimes with like schizophrenia and they can have different kinds of conditions. And so there's actually like a neurological response that causes you to lock up and not move. It's like your biology is just sort of playing dead. And that state is called catatonia. And later on, when you guys get Professor Dr. K, then, or Professor K or whatever, I'll show you guys papers and physiology and stuff like that. But I, I think what happened to you when people blame you for not speaking and when people, when, when people say, oh, you could have said no at any time. And when even people say like, oh, you should have said something, just say something. People mm -hmm. need to understand that there's actually like physiological evidence that shows that when human beings are in danger, literally what they do is lock up. It's mm -hmm. not like a psychological lockup. It's like a neurological lockup. It's fucking mm -hmm. weird. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't even know what I was talking about there, but oh yeah. So, so what I was saying is that, you know, the mo the reason that you didn't speak back then is because of maybe a catatonic response. Fine. It was a survival mm -hmm. response. You froze. The reason that you're not speaking now, I suspect is different because you are walking and talking, right? It's not the catatonic yeah. response. It's something else. So I'd really mm -hmm. like to understand what that is. Can we talk about that? Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And once again, you know, you get to pull the plug at any point, Yvonne. Okay. Um, and I may pull the plug if I think, you know, I'm going to try to pull the plug for you if I think that you go into a catatonic space and you can't pull the plug yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is it that makes it hard for you to name names? Um, there's a lot of 
implications that come along with it. What kind of implications? Implications for you, implications for them, implications for mutual people? It feels like the whole world. Okay. So let's stop and think about that for a second. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, Yvonne, that I'm afraid of doing something because it has implications for the whole world, how would you interpret that? What would you think about me? Mm, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, it depends, like, what I'm asking you, why you're not, like, what you're not sharing and stuff. But, yeah. So, l let there me put it... Certain things, like you said before, that I want to protect, and yep. so I can't. Okay. Can you tell us... So my first thought is that when someone feels like it has implications from the whole world, that sounds like a emotional thought as opposed to a logical thought. What do you think about that? I agree. So what is the emotion that is keeping you from speaking? Is it fear? Is it shame? Is it anger? Is it love? I think it's love. Yeah, I mean, that makes so much more. I've never realized this until today, but like, it makes so much sense. You know? And, and, I mean, this is such a hard conversation to have because how do I, how do we understand this more without compromising what your goals are, which I want to respect at all costs? Because the question that I want to ask is like, who do you love that you're trying to protect? But I think that that's the question that you don't want to answer. So yeah. I can't ask that question. But I feel like that's the important question. You with me? Mm -hmm. Let me think about this. Why do you feel responsible for protecting the ones that you love? Because I want to. This may be the final boss, by the way. You may be the raid boss. People have been looking for the raid boss for a long time. Yeah. I'm just trying to really think about... Okay, let me put it to you this way. The people that you're trying to protect, what do you think they would say about you speaking? If that was ultimately what I wanted to do, I think they would support me 100%. Okay. But... Okay, so that's a that's an interesting statement. So we're going to unpack that a little bit. But like, it's kind of interesting because you're saying if that's what I really wanted to do, they would support me. But if you're, man, I don't even say this. If you're, but you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for them. Yeah. Right. So so but like so like what you're saying sort of doesn't make sense to me is because it's kind of like. You know, if I want to, I feel like baking a cake or I'm going to bake a cake and I'm going to bake it for them. So I'm going to put in all this time and effort for their sake. I'm going to suffer and stay silent for them. And then if I go to the person, and I say like, hey, like, I want to bake this cake for you. And they're like, but I don't want the cake. Like, you should do whatever you want to. Like, if you want the cake, go for it. You know, so, so it's, it's weird because you're making a sacrifice for on their behalf. But, like, I'm not so sure that they want you to make that sacrifice. Do you think they want you to make that sacrifice? 
Do you think they would want you to be silent? Would it's not they... that they would want me to be silent. I think they would always want what's like best for me or like they would want me to be happy. It's just also a part of what I want to do. Uh, it's a part of what you, so you want to stay silent. Right now, yeah. Yeah, okay. And and that's out of primarily you still think love or do you think that there's some other stuff going on there? No, I think it's still that. Okay. And, um, okay, so I think if you want to stay silent, then I think maybe we've done enough for today. What do you think? Yeah. Does that okay. sound good to you? Okay. Mm -hmm. So one last question. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I should teach you meditation, but boy, is it hard to teach meditation <laughs> after this. Uh, yeah. So do you, do you feel, so I, I know that you don't want to name names, fine. Do you feel comfortable saying who it is that you love and for whom you're choosing to stay silent? Or is that too much? Because I can't, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if that's the same people. Oh, uh, right. Um, just think in general. There's like not a lot I want to say in regards to that. Okay. Cool. I wish I could because I feel like it could help a lot of people, but nope. just maybe not right now. Don't don't worry about it, man. I, I really don't want you to worry about that. So <laughs> I, I think that, let me put it this way, Yvonne. Mm -hmm. You don't have to help everyone. You just do what you can do. And if half of the world or a quarter of the world or 10% of the world does what you've done today, we're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. You don't need to lift for all of us. You don't have to be ADC for the whole fucking every league game out there. Yeah. We just need like 20% of people to be ADCs, mm -hmm. right? Like literally, like it's a beautiful analogy. Everything can be learned from League of Legends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you've carried plenty for today and you don't need to keep carrying. You know, you don't need to carry for other people. I think you've done like, that's what, that's what AOE healing is about. It's like each person comes on and like does their part. And then uh -huh. some other noob will come on and they'll start carrying. Yeah. True. How are you feeling right now? Uh, yeah. A uh, little shaken up. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I mean, I should hope you're a little bit shaken up. I'm fucking shaken <laughs> up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, a little bit more than you bargained for, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I didn't expect a lot of it. I thought it was going to be like, yeah, but it was good. It was good. Yeah. I mean, for what it's worth, way more than what I bargained for. Yeah. You know, I thought we were just going to be talking about imposter syndrome because that shit I know. Yeah. And, you know, low self-esteem and all this other uh, stuff. And it just feels like talk for so long about other things but yeah, yeah. that's yeah. um you know no pressure in terms of meditation and i don't even know what i would teach mm -hmm. today i mean i feel like after after sessions like today i don't really tell like i think probably the best thing to do is for you to just sit and process and don't try to force your mind to do anything um if you have an animal or a cup of tea or something tasty or sunlight or water, I think you should go and be with those things mm -hmm. and just let yourself shed. Cause you've been like kind of wrung out, right? Does that, do you feel that way? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to just let yourself like, you know, when I, when I twist something and I wring it out, it has a natural tendency to like want to come back to its former mm -hmm. shape. That's what your meditation should be. Mm -hmm. Let yourself return to the person that you are, that's like kind of in your comfortable neutral state. Mm -hmm. If you have children, I would say that you should kiss them and cuddle them. That's what I'm going to do after we're done with this. Yeah. I'm going to hold my daughters and possibly, I mean, this is going to sound like a bad joke, but touch them in places that they don't want to be touched. Like I'm going <laughs> to kiss their belly button and gobble yeah. their cheeks mm -hmm. and, and things like that. As a side note, I can tell you, so I, my, my wife told me, can I tell you a story? Sure. Yeah. So my wife actually taught me a really important lesson. So when my eldest daughter was two, she's like four now, mm -hmm. um, I was trying to convince her to give me a kiss, right? Because yeah. that's what we do. And then she mm -hmm. was like, you know, you should be careful about what you teach her about like cajoling affection when she doesn't want to give it. 
Mm -hmm. And like, what am I signaling to her in terms of like, how do you respond when someone wants you to do something that you don't feel like doing? Fucking blew my mind. Yeah, that's crazy. That makes, yeah. I never even thought of it that way. Yeah, I never thought of it that way either. But now I just, I totally like respect their boundaries, which is like, you know, can daddy have yeah. a kiss? And she says no, and then I'll beg and plead a little bit, but then I'll be like, okay, mm -hmm. fine. Can I give you mm -hmm. a kiss? And then she'll mm -hmm. be like, okay. Be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it's really interesting how a lot of this stuff is baked in, right? I, yeah, I think that it is. Teaching her that she's allowed to say no when it comes to physical affection is like mm -hmm. apparently something that you start learning when you're two. And it really yeah. makes me think long and hard about like why you couldn't say no then and what mm -hmm. the programming in your brain was that started when like literally you were two years old or one year, year, year old. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of eye opening. It's interesting to have daughters and be a man. <laughs> Learn yeah. a lot. I bet. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> but uh, it's a very good thing. I feel like you empathize a lot and think a lot from their shoes. Yeah, I, I hope so. Mm -hmm. I feel like most of the time I just don't understand them. They're just completely different creatures. <laughs> yeah, it's sometimes just, it could be like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, Yvonne, listen, thank you very much for coming on today. And I think really strong work. Like that's, I mean, you fucking carried this shit. Yeah, friend. thank you so much for having me. It was, uh, it was, really, really nice and really helpful. That boggles my mind. I mean, I feel like we just, you know, you, you look like you just ran a marathon. <laughs> yeah. And I don't usually expect people to say thank you after that. But I mean, for what it's <laughs> worth, you're welcome. Hopefully it helps you. Hopefully it helps other people. I feel really grateful because I feel like um, hopefully we understand a little bit more about like, you know, this whole situation, which I think is far more complicated than people give it credit for. Mm -hmm. So... And, and good for you for, you know, striving for independence and living a life without regrets. Thank you. Well, hopefully it works out that way. I certainly hope so too. Yeah. It sounds like your, your most recent ex-boyfriend was a really solid guy. So mass respect yeah. to him. Yes. Cool. Take mm -hmm. care. Thank you. Oh, fuck chat. Jesus. Man, Chad, I'm so owned. You guys really want me to meditate now? I can't meditate, man.